Hi everyone and welcome back to my planning series of tips and advice to help you plan your trip to Japan and today is a very important subject buying things in shops and it's probably one of the reasons I always want to go back to Japan because they have so much great stuff and at home in the UK I just don't find that many things I want to buy but in Japan they have so much good stuff. And if you want to see more your planning videos like this one, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. There's lots more coming up and there's lots more on there already, as well as lots of Japan vlogs. Speaking Japanese. Now I think one of the things a lot of people worry about is not being able to speak the language and not knowing what's going on. But I think when you're in the shops buying things, you'll be absolutely fine if you don't speak any Japanese at all. Because the thing is, when you're in a shop, everybody knows the deal and it's a process that everybody knows. You pick what you want, you take it up to the counter, you give them your money, they pack it up for you and you go. And really, you don't even need to say anything. Of course, it does help if you can say a couple of words, like if you can say thank you, arigato, or arigato gozaimasu, that's like thank you very much. They'll always appreciate it and it's polite. But apart from that, I think you can get away with not knowing any Japanese at all and you'll be absolutely fine. Even things like asking if they take credit cards, if you just hold up your card at the counter, they'll know what you mean and they'll either take your card or they'll say no across like this means no in Japan. Like recently I was in Beppu and I wanted to ask the bus driver if I could use my Suica card, that's my train card on the bus because sometimes you can and sometimes you can't in different areas and I said to him Credito card wa tsukaimasu ka? but then I realised even if I couldn't speak any Japanese at all I was holding up my train card and gesturing towards the bus so he would have known what I meant and it really is amazing how much you can communicate without using any words at all. Paying and prices. The price is going to be displayed on the till. Now I do speak some Japanese but even I would get confused when native speakers reel off long lines of numbers especially when the amounts in yen are thousands or tens of thousands it can be quite difficult to catch them but the thing is you don't need to understand any numbers at all because you can just see what the price is on the till it's really easy and if you're at a smaller shop where they might not have that it's quite common for them to have a calculator there and they type the total price into the calculator and hold it up to show you so you can just see it no problems. There's no haggling in Japan. The price is what it is and that's what you pay. I think if you tried to haggle it would probably come across as quite rude. People just don't do it. Most shops have a little tray on the counter for you to put your coins in or your card when you're paying. At first when I first went to Japan I didn't realise that and I tried to give my money to the assistant directly into their hand and they seem kind of taken aback that the tray's there to put your money in and that's what you're supposed to do. If you like the t-shirt I'm wearing today, avocado rich in millennials it's my new design you can get it from cakeswithfaces.co.uk and I can ship to any country in the world you can get it in lady slim fit and men's sizes up to 2xl consumption tax now in Japan there's a consumption tax on things you buy and that is 8% it's going to be going up to 10% towards the end of next year that's the end of 2019 and sometimes it's displayed on price labels and signs in shops and sometimes it isn't sometimes there's a the number without tax and then there's the price with tax in brackets underneath a bit smaller so if it's not displayed and the price at the till is a little bit more than you're expecting that's why there are a couple of shops that are tax free for foreigners like Tokyo Hands and Listen Flavor in Harajuku and kiddie land you can get a lot of cute stuff there they usually have a sign up to encourage you to spend your money you have to show them your passport which is fine because you have to carry your passport with you all the time anyway and sometimes there's a minimum spend like when i was in kiddie land it was i can't remember how much i think it was the equivalent of about 30 pounds and i was with my friends and we all wanted to buy something little so we just all grouped together and bought it together so it was over the minimum limit and then we got 8% off. I got this Gudetama hoodie which was reduced so it was only about 1500 yen. Really good. Sizes. If you're shopping for clothes, sizes in Japan are a bit smaller than western sizes so you might need to get a size up compared to what you usually buy. So if you're a size medium you might need to go for a size large instead. It's also quite common to get free size which just means one size especially in Harajuku which is where I buy all my clothes. 
when it's a dress or something really fitted or a little skirt, sometimes free size can be pretty small. I'm a UK size 10 or usually I'm a small in most things and I've got a couple of dresses that if I was any bigger I probably wouldn't fit into them but then I've got other free size things that are pretty baggy on me especially my zip up hoodies and things and t-shirts would fit a few sizes up so it really does depend where you are. So if you find the sizes are too small in one shop that doesn't mean you won't be able to find something everywhere else and if you're about size 10 or around that size you'll probably be able to fit into everything. If there's a changing room you should ask before you try on clothes. If you don't speak any Japanese just hold up the clothes and point towards the changing room and they'll know what you mean. You should take off your shoes before you go in the cubicle. Just like you do when you go in someone's house in Japan, you take off your shoes at the doorway before you go in. And in one changing room I went to, they had like a little notepad of sheets um, of masks on the wall. So you could put a mask over your face so you didn't get your makeup on the clothes when you tried them on. Shoe sizes. If you're shopping for shoes, the sizes are in centimetres, so they're quite different from UK or European sizes. To find out your size, measure from the back of your heel to the end of your longest toe. Now, you don't want to measure straight front to back. Measure diagonally if you need to, to get the longest length you can. And that centimetre size is your shoe size in Japan. There's also charts online where you can convert US or UK or European shoe sizes to Japanese centimetre sizes. Money and paying for things is also part of going shopping and I've made a separate video about that on my channel with all my tips for how you can pay, when you can use cards and how to get your yen before you go to Japan. There's also a video with tips for buying figures if you want to go to Akihabara and buy some anime figures and I'll put the link to that in the description as well. And if there's anything else you want to know about, put it in the comments. I'm not an expert on buying absolutely everything but maybe someone else will know and will be able to help you out. If you want to see more Japaning videos like this this one subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and there's also lots more Japan vlogs coming up of my travels in Fukuoka, Osaka and Tokyo and if you want to support Cakes with Faces have a look at my designs on cakeswithfaces.co.uk. See you soon, bye bye!